QuickBooks Online 2021 Account and Settings, Billing and Subscription, Usage and Sales tabs. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We're going to be continuing on with what would be similar to the preferences in the desktop version by going to the cog up top. We're going to go into your company column on the left side, look at the account and settings. Last time we took a look at the account and settings for the company information. This time we're going to briefly look at the billing, subscription, usage, and then focus in on the sales tabs. So billing and subscription, this is going to give you the information about your, you know, your current billing and subscription and see if you want to level up in any way. So we got the QuickBooks Online Plus. We have the QuickBooks Online Payroll. So payroll will typically be that add-on type of feature that we've discussed a few times and we'll continue to talk about when we get into the payroll items. You can buy more supplies, including things like checks and whatnot. These are going to be things that uh, if you buy external checks, then you would have to have pre-printed checks that you put into the printer and print out of the system. You may be able to get your 1099s and W-2s here as well, depending on the circumstances for those items. QuickBooks Online Payments. So accept payments online or in person. Customers can pay uh, by credit, debit, Apple Pay, or bank transfer. So if you want to look into other options to, for the receiving of the payment, then you can look into this option here. And then QuickBooks Live Full Service Bookkeeping which gives you that full service bookkeeping live. So get live support from a dedicated QuickBooks certified bookkeeper who will go through your past books line by line to bring them up to date, maintain your books each month so you're ready for tax time, meet with you one-on-one -on -one to provide ongoing insights on your business. So you got those options there. Then in the usage, this will go over some of your usage stats and kind of give you some stats as to whether it would be advisable or not to power up if you need to to the QuickBooks online advanced so if that would be something of interest then you you can go into here for that item and look more into the advanced we're not going to spend a lot of time on it at this point and then we're going to go to the sales items first thing on the sales item you can customize your forms if you go to the customized look and feel of the forms the forms that will be going to clients will typically be invoice estimates sales receipts so we won't go into the customization of these this time but after the practice problem, we might go into some more of that customization to just give it a little more personal type of look and feel for the forms. I'm going to go back into this by going to the cog up top again, your company. We're going to go to the account and settings, and then we're going to go back into the sales tab. So then we have the, the sales uh, form content. I'm going to hit the editing pencil to the right. So we have the preferred invoice terms. So if you hit the drop down. That means that when we invoice someone, we're going to increase the accounts receivable. How soon do we expect to be paid in? The, the default is 30 days, meaning we expect to be paid in 30 days. You can add other terms if you so choose here. So this is the due uh, fixed days and due by certain day of the month and so on and so forth. We're going to keep the default terms as have been provided for us. So I'm going to keep the 30 days here, net 30. Preferred delivery method. So the delivery method sets the default delivery method delivery method default determines the way you'll deliver sales forms to newly created customers uh, you can change the default delivery method for a customer by editing the customer on the customer list so meaning when we set up a new customer this will be the default so either we print it later we send it later uh, so whether we're going to print them or send them i'm going to go print later and then the shipping item we have here adds shipping fields date tracking number destination subtotal to sales forms related settings so we, if we want to add these items then to the sales forms i'm not going to do so here i'll keep the default which is off custom fields if we want to add custom fields to our form add extra fields to sales form select internal to show the field in quickbooks select public to show the field to customers so if we have another field that we want to have in here we can add a custom field and then we can make that custom field visible possibly just to us as we input the data into the field or we can make it public to the customer as well meaning something that's actually going to be printing out on the invoice so when we make the invoice something that we provide to the customer we might want something on there for our internal use that's not going to be printed to the customer or we might want to add something that would be printed so then we have the customer transaction number so the transaction number lets you lets you view the uh, view and change your transaction number and then we have the service date 
adds a service date field if you need to track the date a service was performed. So if we're actually doing a service, we could turn this one on. Its default is off. I'm going to keep that. Then we have the discount. Adds a discount field to invoices in other sales forms. So if we want like the subtotal of the total and then to provide a discount on say the invoice or sales receipt, we can add that. Deposit. Adds a deposit field to invoices so you can subtract a customer deposit from the total to the calculate. So if the customer then provides a you know deposit payment on, on the invoice, like a down payment, then you can make the invoice and put the deposit basically in it. And then the tips adds a tips field to a sales receipt, not for mandatory uh, gr uh, gratuity or service feeds related settings. So you can turn on the tip field as well. Then let's go to the next item down here. We'll save those. Let's save those changes. I don't think I changed anything. And then we have the late fees. Let's hit the the editing item default charge applies to overdue overdue invoices so if we're going to be charging late fees meaning we sent the invoice and then we want to be charging late fees on it if it is late then you can basically turn this on and then apply your late fees i'm going to keep the default of it being off and then we got the progress invoicing so if i select the pencil here create multiple partial invoices from a single estimate so when we make an estimate, if we do something like construction jobs or something like that, then we can create multiple partial invoices for that one estimate, meaning we make the estimate, which doesn't actually have a financial transaction, but we're estimating what we predict to happen. And that can then be used, that estimate could then be used for our, our invoicing in the future. That's kind of a specialty type of area as well. So um, then we've got the messages. So messages, default email message sent with the sales form. So then you can set up your uh, de default message. So the greeting, use uh, the greeting dear, or you can uh, add another greeting, and then the full name, and then uh, sales form. We got the invoice, estimate, credit memo, so on, invoice here, and then here's your invoice, and then explanation. We appreciate your prompt payment. So if this is what you want to have your default to be, or you can update that, of course. Email me a copy. So if you want it to be sent to you as well, every time it was sent out, you can check that off. Uh, to not have, if you send a lot out, that could overwhelm your email. So sometimes you may not want that. And then uh, new invoice address, blind copy, and so on for that. I'm going to save that. Reminders. Let's take a look at the reminders. Default email message for invoice reminders automatic invoice reminders so you can then turn on the automatic invoice reminders which would be then automatic email reminders only apply to new invoices turning off automatic email uh, removes them from all invoices so any new invoices you make then you can have the reminder here if we turn this on so it would be uh, three days before so you got your reminder we're sending a reminder to let you know that the invoice uh, has not been paid and so on. So you can kind of automate the reminder that would be sent out and the message that would be sent with it. I'm going to go back to the default settings and turn them off for our practice problem. Online delivery. So online delivery. On, so email options for all sales forms. Shows short summary email. Shows show the full detail in email. PDF attachment. Additional email options for invoices online invoices i'm going to keep the default settings there and then we have the statements lastly list each transaction as a single line list, list each transaction including all of the detail on the statements so a statement includes all unpaid transactions for a customer choose how to detail include so the, the single line will of course will save some space you can experiment with the all lines here if you want list each transaction including all detail lines show aging table at bottom of the statement again i'll keep the default setting on that as well so that's going to be the sales tab